What's up everyone? Scott the Charhammer here. I got a great day ahead of me. So this is a place that I've been told for years that I need to come fish. Finally had the chance to do that today. Now let me tell you something about this place real quick. This place is <laughs> this place is a fisherman's amusement park. This is a fisherman's Disneyland. I am at St. Louis Ponds. Hey, it just it, Oh <laughs> look at all that goodness. This is my new playground. Yeah, there are seven ponds that are accessible in this whole area. I mean, look look at all the bank access out there. Holy crap. And just this spot right here, I stopped by and looked at the water. I saw like four different species of sunfish just right beside the dock. I've come here to fish a lot, so I'm just going to get right to it. Before we do, I'm going to ask that you guys please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get this channel to grow to a thousand subscribers, and I need your help to do that. So if you could, please hit the subscription button down there. Notify bell up there, so you're going to be the first to see all the great content that's going to come from this channel. Yep, you saw me. There you go, guys. That's a fish. There you go, guys. That's unreal! Oh, this is such an awesome looking fish. Oh, yeah! All right, guys, check that out. Now, I came here to fish for everything. I mean, I've heard of these ponds. I know they stock them with trout, and there's a really good bass and catfish population here. That's really what I'm going to focus on, but, I mean, I want to see exactly what the sunfish here look like to know what kind of presentation to use for the fish I actually want to target. Hey, look at that. They're just stacked right here. These look like bluegill. Yes, yeah, so you guys see how much these bluegill are fighting, how aggressive they are? These bluegill are about ready to spawn. Oh man, that is like classic bluegill color. Oh, hey there, buddy. Yeah, when they say bluegill, that is absolutely bluegill. Yeah, that wasn't just bluegill, that was navy bluegill. I don't know if you guys can see those two right there, but those two are actually spawning right now. Yep, that was their ritual. Yeah, lighter color bluegill. Oh, tiny, tiny bluegill. Oh, hi, frog. I almost stepped on you. All right, so the bluegill here have some pretty vibrant colors to them. Okay, so that's pond one. I'm going to go further down the road. Oh, I got a key here. So they put the trout in pond three. I guess the rest of them are just kind of spread throughout. I've already seen those. I wonder if I can have a three species day. Oh well, guys, I think we have found Topwater City. But you know, since it's already rigged up, let's try big, big worm. Okay, nope, way too much vegetation. So let's get a nice big popping frog going. <laughs> So pop quiz, what's worse than cheese? Cotton and cheese. Find a less cheesy spot. Well, I found all the bait fish. Yeah, this all looks far more doable. Oh really? I'll check it out, thank you. All right. Man, the water over here is so freaking clear. It's amazing. All right, let's go off in the corner that guy told me about. Pretty sure this is the corner he was talking about. Yeah, this is all hydrilla over here. So top water, the order of the day. Yeah, I mean, you guys can see how thick this hydrilla is, but I know there's bass hiding down in that hydrilla and you could use any sort of top water to bring over those hydrilla mats and keep it on the surface and the bass can still see them trust me they can see up through the top of that hydrilla and yeah, it's really starting to get windy the reason why i rigged up that yellow frog is because nature gave me a clue remember when i stopped by that first spot and there was that yellow frog that jumped out in front of me on the trail so there's yellow frogs here match the hatch the bass are eating the frogs are going to look yellow 
It's one of the nice things about frogs, you just bring them right over timber like that. I tried explaining this in the Lucky Tackle Box video, but the, the video cut to two different segments automatically. When you go to set the hook on a bass when he takes your frog, as soon as you see that swirl and your frog disappears, wait. Don't immediately try to set the hook because a lot of times when you do that, you're going to fling the frog out of the fish's mouth. Can't tell you how many times I've missed on bass by doing that accidentally. What you want to do is you want to wait until you feel the weight of the fish. You feel the fish still has it in his mouth because he thinks that's food. He wants to eat that. He's trying to swallow that. So he's going to turn and make a move and that's when you feel the weight of the fish. And then all you do is you reel down in the fish and just ram those hooks home. That's why you need that super stiff rod to be able to bury two gigantic hooks into the bony part of the fish's mouth. Since we're doing a lot of frog topics in the last couple of videos, I mean, it's summer, it's topwater fishing time, but also everywhere I've been fishing lately has been really shallow, really weedy water. So this is the time to throw these things. If you wanna know my favorite brand of a walking frog, it's the Strike King KVD Sexy Frog, the walking frog. The size is just right. You don't have to trim the, uh, you don't have to trim the legs off as much, but they do a really good job designing a frog with hooks that stay weedless, and you don't really have to move these hooks to set them to kill. I mean, my fingers are already getting snagged on the points, and the fish doesn't have to bite down as much to get hooked on those giant hooks. That and the walking action on these frogs, you really don't have to jerk your rod a lot. You don't have to twitch your rod a ton to get these things to walk. Really, all you gotta do is shake your rod as you reel. And you see, this is all I'm doing and it's got a really good walking action. But you can still do the, I guess, traditional walking cadence if you want to move a little more aggressively. I'm gonna move on to a different pond. So weird to be able to say that and literally just walk around the corner. Oh, cotton. Well, I'm here, let's give it a shot. So like I said last time fishing a frog, the reason why I use such heavy line, that 65 pound braid, look at this, look at all this timber. If I get a frog, or if I get a fish on this frog, I want to be able to power it around that timber because the fish is going to try to wrap itself around it. Okay, yep, yeah, there's just too much cotton over here. And you know, something for this situation here, you know, I <laughs> I already emptied the frog, so I didn't get, <laughs> I forgot to mention this before I uh, uh, did that, is you see how this like thick mat is right here? You can use when you have water in your frog to your advantage in that situation because it'll weigh it's, it'll weigh down a little bit more it'll sort of push down on that mat and it tells the fish if they're looking for that's a bigger heavier frog better meal i think i farted around here enough time to do what i actually came here to do you know i will come back to this place and do some bass videos here you know because just looking at this place seeing everything that's here i mean i could just this is like like a teacher's playground but i don't have a lot of time here number one those <laughs> thunderstorms heading my way number two this is a pretty far away drive from home rebecca allowed me to come out here and fish today but not going to be gone long oh yeah i've got about half an hour oh yes look at that muddy water they know what they're doing this is what i'm here for and i am here for catfish now, I freely admit that I'm a novice at catfishing. But like I said, I learned a lot at that class. I mean, I, I can catch yellow catfish like it's, like it's nothing, but I've never caught a channel catfish. And I also hear those are the ones you'd want to eat. So I'm going to use two different bait presentations today. First off, I want to see if my pack bait that I use for catfish and carp, that works for catfish and carp, will work for channel catfish here. Uh, show you guys real quick how you make this stuff. Yeah, about that, you basically get two videos for the price of one. So yeah, this is just panko breadcrumbs, strawberry jello, and a can of sweet corn. So, like I've said before, when using any sort of bait that you're going to use your hands, to mold. You want to mask as much of the human scent as you can. So take some grass and try to find the greenest grass you can and grind that up in your hands. Grind it up in your palms and in between your fingers too. And I see I got a little bit of green on my hands. That means it worked. But that grass is going to help mask the human scent. So first thing I need to do with this presentation, get a piece of fake corn threaded onto the end of a hair rig and take a bait stopper Put it in that loop 
and then pin that corn on the end of the hair rig. And then with the pack bait, you use a method lead. So this is a sliding lead with these ribs on it that's designed to hold in pack bait, which is just what that stuff is right there. That like soft moldable bait. And this is a 15 gram one. I'm using that power for the, or using that weight for the power of the rod I have here. But then the hair rig goes to the end here. So what you do, take a good amount of that pack bait and mash it into a ball and then mash it into that lead nice and tight into the lead and this thing is designed with that weight on the bottom so it's going to fall with the weight on the bottom and that pack bait is going to be on top and then just bury the hook into that pack bait and so what's going to happen is when this is in the water this stuff's going to break apart and disperse and it's going to create a big pocket of scent that's going to attract any fish like catfish or carp that would eat this and when they get that uh fake horn in their mouth they get hooked on that hook from the hair rig and you're not familiar with the method this is actually you know huh, no pun intended to being a meth lead this is a legal way to chum here in oregon because it is illegal to chum in oregon and you know that method lead that's a great system to use if you're looking for a quick bite if you don't have a lot of time to fish all right we got a windy day on our hands so i'm going to use a bait alarm and on the heavier rod we're going with something different. So with this rod, I'm just using a size five circle hook, one ounce tungsten sliding lead for a Carolina rig. And the bait I'm using, cut bait bluegill. So for the longest time, it was actually really confusing if you could or couldn't use a, a cut bait for fishing. And I had the regulations clarified for me by a state trooper during that class that as long as the fish is dead, you can legally use it as bait. I've had this fish on ice for about an hour, so pretty pretty much guaranteed it's dead. So I'm just going to go through the head of that bluegill so it gives that hook point plenty of exposure to hook up on the fish. Alright, bite alarm on that. And so the reason for that bluegill is because channel catfish in particular have a really selective diet and one of the primary parts of their diet is other fish little fish like bluegill and now we wait all right i've been in this spot for about 15 minutes with absolutely nothing so time to move on hey you guys can see though your method lead will come out of the water pretty much clean now catfish and carp fishing they kind of fit in the same mold with this is if you're in an area for about 15 minutes and no activity means there's no fish there move on to a different spot I'm going to take that as a clue that other people have fished this spot for catfish. I have it here, I can angle the rods into the wind a little better. The reason why that pack bait is a legal way to chum here in Oregon is because the regulations, the law as it's written, is you can only use bait that's attached to your hook. You can't throw bait into an area expecting to draw fish in. It's got to be attached to your hook. That is a pack of bait that you would normally chum with that is attached to a hook. Yeah, you guys can see with the wind how much those rods are moving around. That's what this bite alarm is really coming handy for. So if I was just sitting here watching it, I wouldn't be jumping up every five seconds to grab the rod thinking I have a fish on. Those bite alarms are what's going to let me know. Hard to mistake that sound versus just seeing action. Doink can be deceiving. I hope I can catch channel catfish here. I'm not expecting a whole lot because I've never caught channel catfish, this is also my first time fishing this location. It's also middle of the day and it ended up being a lot windier than I expected it to be. I know in the area I live the catfish are almost exclusively nocturnal feeders. Well I just saw a little fish activity over by where I've got my uh, cut bait. Okay so I did see some of those fish that were making activity on the surface. They are bluegill. Good. So I'm using the correct bait if the channel catfish are eating bluegill. I didn't bring any of my bass gear, didn't bring any cast and retrieve gear with me over here, but now that I see this, I could easily bring some swim baits through here. You know, it's another part of the catfish having a selective diet. They're usually eating other fish. Let's get another layout of this area because I can bring a lure through here. Try lure fishing for channel catfish. That's a big difference between channel catfish and other catfish. That's something I learned on Thursday is that channel catfish are a lot more aggressive. They're a lot more, uh, they're a lot more of a hunter. They're willing to chase down live food a lot more than other catfish. Most of the time, catfish are just scooting along the bottom, just indiscriminately eating as they go. Channel catfish, not so much. Okay, so if, if you guys are bank anglers, I will give you guys two tips with this right here. So tip number one, if you want to find a good fishing spot where you could guess that people have a lot of success catching fish look for that look for just a you know a y in the ground just a stick that someone uses as a rod holder usually a clue that this is a good spot tip number two 
if you don't want people fishing your honey hole, don't leave clues to it. Seriously, just <laughs> rip that out of the ground, throw it away, take it home with you. I don't care. I bring my own rod holders. If you, if you don't want people fishing your honey hole, don't let them know it's your honey hole. All right, so I just adjusted that bait, and the one ounce tungsten was moving pretty easily along the bottom. So this has just got to be a dirt or mud bottom. You know, I've fished in clear water. I've fished in gin clear water. I fished in dirty, muddy water, and I fished in chocolate milk. I've never fished in milk. I mean, this water is opaque. <laughs> this water looks like E.E. E. Wilson in like the early, early winter. It means this one's got to be shut off from the other ponds because the other ponds were gin clear because all that hydrilla. Oh, the deer just showed up on the other bank. Hi, Mrs. Deer. You want to tell me where the fish are? Maybe the channel cats? Any clues for me? All right, you do you. Well, it looks like those thunderstorms have taken a hard turn to the south, so I've got a little bit more time. <laughs> By a little bit, I mean like maybe half an hour. I know normally when you fish for catfish, you want to find the holes, which is why I've which is why I've been fishing these corners because I mean, if there's anything that's going to be a hole in a pond like this, it's going to be those corners. I looked at the I looked at the map of this area, and I know there's like some uh, just uh, culverts that feed. Uh, one part of a pond to another, but I mean there's really no current. There's no moving water Pretty sure these are also man-made ponds. So I mean the deepest parts got to be right in the middle then All right, so this is gonna be the last spot What I did is I put the cut bait under a bobber have it sort of suspended in the middle Let's see how that does and a nice thing about right here. I can sit for the first time in hours All right, and I've been in this spot for about 20 minutes with absolutely nothing going on but I can feel the change in the air. Those thunderstorms are right upon me. I suppose right now I could do my new subscriber shout out. So shout out to Michael Manning. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. And also to the other people that subscribe to the channel that had their subscription settings to private. You guys know who you are. I think you guys just the same. And I'm doing new subscriber shout outs with each video. Shouting out the subscribers that signed up to the channel between uploads. So if you want your name called out, don't forget to get signed up. Daddy, Daddy's got the camera. Look, he does look. look at his eyes. Look at what Daddy's got. So Sia. Sia, you have to go look at Grandpa. She says, I don't want my picture taken. I'm going to be shy. I'm going to look outside. She says, it's a beautiful day out there. Oh, and I'm a part of it. <laughs> yes. Is yeah. that a new story for her puppy? I don't know yet. I'm just gonna look at the pictures. She's got the hiccups now. Oh, once you upon a time, there was a sweet <laughs> little girl named Sophia, and she had the hiccups. <laughs> and she thought they were pretty funny. She whoop, and uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's contagious. <laughs> you got me hiccuping too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She says, I don't like them now. They were funny a minute ago, but now they're not. And I hiccup and I hiccup and I hiccup and I hiccup. But they're still cute. The moral of the story is, even with hiccups, I'm still the cutest in the world. What are the hiccups about? Well, I can fart later, Dad. Aww. She said, I see my knee over there. <laughs> Oh, how can we get rid of the hiccups? Try Either. putting her up on you, my fist, uh, like up on your shoulder, or sitting her more upright. Yeah. Just change position. You got help on me? He said, nope. <laughs> Still got the darn things. Do you think Mammy Mimi can get your hiccups to go away? Oh my goodness, I can't. Huh? 
pick up, pick up, pick up. Oh, come here. Let's do this. Let's try this. I'm going to feel up like a big girl. How's that? Does this help? She says, this is a different view of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with my grandma and grandpa on the recliners no. and fall asleep. And fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> say, but that's because I'm young and I need all my rest I can get. Grandma and grandpa are just old and, and they get tired. <laughs> now, go back to learn one thing just like Alfie learned. Grandpa's older than dirt. <laughs> show this back to her 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, if you were old as dirt then, how old are you now? I'm older That's than dirt. That's what she'll ask I'm, you. I'm older than dirt. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm much older than dirt. I'll be, I'll be like ancient dirt. <laughs> I'll be historical dirt. <laughs> so, you want to go see me? You need to go to give her your hiccups. I give her hiccups. I show her hiccups. You have a chair? I'm good. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. Big hiccup. Did that one hurt? It sounded like it hurt. Ouch. Ouch. Tell my phone to be oh. quiet. Can you that tell my phone to be quiet? Oh, that was funny? Okay. See, I still got hiccups, Poppy. Hiccups. What are those hiccups about? Yeah, we did that. We did that. Yeah. That's a rub your tummy. You know? Are you getting tired of them? Oh. Yeah? Here. Let's try this. Let's try this. Oh. A change in position. Sometimes we rub the dog. <laughs> nope. Nope. Stop for a second there. Nope. See? Oh, that one hurt. Oh, no, it's a big hiccup. Hi. Hi, cutie pie. Aww. Aww. They'll go away, I promise. They will go away. I promise you they will go away. Here. Okay, that didn't work. Anybody else have any ideas? Look at a finger on Mimi's shirt. There we go. Not a good shirt. I won't wear this next time. So we was driving by and I had to see you because mm. I missed you. If I had a toy that would help. Do that toy handy. I don't know. Oh, here. What does it do? It's Should we pull? Sounds, but it doesn't have batteries. No, oh, you, you goodness sake! That was a big one! That was big! Howie! Oh, lights up. Oh, 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 look what Daddy oh. found! What is this? What in the world? Oh, that's pretty! Oh, no! Oh, oh no. that's oh, pretty! Oh, honey! Sophia, looky! Let's just let her listen oh. to it for a second. Oh, isn't that pretty? Like oh, some, isn't that pretty? Well, it looks like some kind of alien. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that some pretty? Yeah. <gasps> See that? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Did it get rid of your hiccups? <laughs> <laughs> I think it worked. I think it worked. Oh. Mm. Look what Daddy's got. Oh, my goodness. Look at Daddy's got. Uh, 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 I think that pretty thing. Oh. Oh. Got rid of the hiccups. It did the trick. Oh. It did the trick. We got rid of the hiccups. It scared you. We didn't mean to scare oh, you. Poor honey.
<laughs> she even nodded. <laughs> Your hiccups are gone. This one's a daddy giving them to you. I got rid of them. Look at those big, curious eyes. Yeah. You got such a strong neck already. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, she'll have a rebuttal. Are you eating my sweater? She's eating my sweater. Are you getting hungry? Yeah, she's eating my sweater. She's eating my sweater. Good day, Mommy. Okay, we'll get you back. And yeah, that's pretty much where I'm going to end the video today, guys. You know, not a lot to do besides, you know, fish, spend some time with the family. Got to get everything packed up and put away from the trip. You know, didn't get any catfish over at St. Louis Ponds, but, you know, trying to learn channel catfish in particular. It's easy to catch the catfish around here. It's just they're nocturnal feeders, and I can't really show it that well with a camera. But you guys will see catfish footage soon. But of course, let me know what you guys thought down in the comments below. And I'm trying to get this channel to grow to a thousand subscribers, and I need your help to do that. So if you could, please hit that subscribe button down there. Notify bell up there on the corner of your screen, so you're going to be the first to see all the great content that's come from this channel. And if you want your name shouted out for the channel, don't forget to subscribe, get signed up, and you'll hear your name. And if you want to receive a shout out on the channel for subscribing, don't forget to do that. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, tips up, tight lines, and have fun fishing.